be advised. The opinions and views of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Philippines Uncut. I'm Buddy Kunana. Now, on this show, we talk about everything under the sun, and tonight's topic is about current events. Now, for the past so many months, we've all had a ringside seat via media, principally TV and newspapers, to the very historic and very controversial impeachment trial of uh, Supreme Court Chief Justice Fernando Corona, which has resulted in the latter's ouster from office, the first time a Chief Justice uh, of the Philippines has been subjected to such a fate. Now, um, in this very controversial and very historic event, in this very controversial and very historic event, many cause-oriented groups and non-government organizations have followed have followed the developments very closely. And tonight, we're going to talk to one such group, a group called Tangulang Democracia, about their views and reflections on this show entitled "The Corona uh, Reflections on the Corona Impeachment Trial." So, uh, I'd like to welcome on the show. The uh, spokesperson for Tangulang Democracia, starting yes. on my right with uh, Ms. Jing Mable. Hello, buddy. Good evening, ma'am. Welcome to Philippines, uh, Philippines Uncut. Uh, happy to be here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to send our message to our kababayan na bumangon na. No? Yes, ma'am. And uh, beside you is uh, Mr. June Estrella, who's also a spokesperson for Tangulang Democracia and an IT expert. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Welcome to Philippines Uncut. Well, good evening, and uh, thank you for the opportunity of uh, giving Tangulan Democracia at least uh, a time for us to be able to provide you with our advocacy and uh, programs that we have for uh, the immediate future. Our pleasure, sir. Now, before we start talking about our, our topic for tonight, let's uh, introduce yourselves to, the, to our viewers. What, uh, uh, tell us a bit about yourselves. What, starting with you, Ms. Mable. I'm Jing Mable. I'm uh, well, I'm a freelance writer now, and I uh, teach um, part-time at the Philippine Polytechnic University. And uh, so since I'm semi-retired, I have time to devote to advocacies like those we have at Tandem. And I think it's high time that uh, we really work hard on it. What do you teach for in Philippine Polytechnic? 
uh, media law and ethics and um, very timely <laughs> and of course the lit uh, world literature and Philippine literature courses uh, investigative journalism you know things like yes courses like Kaya po, Mr. Estrella. Well, I'm uh, currently now a management consultant. I do project management, uh, working with some banks, uh, uh, IT systems, and uh, on the side, I'm uh, working with Tandem specifically for the computerization aspect of the 2010 elections and the 2013 elections. Another two very uh Touchy subjects also, very controversial yes. subjects, but we'll, we'll talk about it later. Let's talk about Tandem first. Um, Tangulan Demokrasya, we, we, we heard the very inspiring and very beautiful uh, hymn mm -hmm. in the opening of the show. And uh, I think that really encapsulates what Tandem is all about. And it, it's very, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it seems like it's an organization that's really dedicated towards nation building and improvement of society. Now, tell us, um, tell us more about Tandem. When was this founded and why was it founded? Um, tandem is really a product of um, the um, advocacies of different groups no, for good governance, but which sort of uh, converged on the uh, electronic rigging that happened in the 2010 elections. So we have a, a group, a, an aggregation of about 13 uh, professional groups and um, uh, concerned citizens and um, we for the past two years we have been trying to gather the uh, information and evidence proving that indeed the PICOS machines that were used in the 2010 elections were can be hacked and had been hacked so uh, but um, this we have okay we have cases filed in court okay. no um, but um, with the recent development with the impeachment of the chief justice corona uh, we feel that somehow we have been denied the the yes. hope of you yes. know uh, finding justice yes, yes. for the Philippine electorate. Yes. How big is uh, this organization, Mr. Estrella? How big is Tandem? Well, ta Tandem uh, started with uh, about four or five uh, organizations, but now it, it has grown to about 13, 14 as, as the core. Uh, like in my case, uh, I, was, I was with the uh, Global Filipino Group. Uh, the specific name is Global Filipino Nation. The, the chairman of that is uh, Vic Barrios. And we were accredited as an uh, election uh, observer for the 2010 elections. And uh, at the end of our observation, uh, during the actual uh, election day and afterwards, we wrote a report that challenges the results of the 2010 elections. And from there, uh, that became the main focal point of uh, Tangulang Demokrasya, yes. of really looking out and finding out what really happened in the 2010 elections. And then from that advocacy, it sort of, you, you, you sort of spun off now because of this major, major event in our country, the, the impeachment and conviction of uh, uh, Chief Justice Renata Corona. How did Tandem now move segue from, to segue <laughs> from PICOS to, to, to uh, Corona impeachment? Actually, um, the, the main argument against the 2010 elections was the violation of the law. So we at Tandem, we really advocate for the rule of law mm -hmm. so that during the, arm, the deliberations for the armed elections when uh, this, uh, pre the present uh, administration tried to uh, change the the law yes. to conform to what it thinks should be done, we advocated for the rule of law. And now, with the recent um, impeachment of uh, former Chief Justice Corona, we, we saw that there is this uh, trend of, uh, uh, of making the crooked straight, no? <laughs> I mean, something, I mean, just just so they get what they want, they twist the law or they twist uh, things. 
and this is something that you know uh, we Filipinos shouldn't tolerate anymore. Yes. It's, it's been happening for the last 100 years. We cannot go on like this. Yes, it was in your in, in, in the hymn when we saw the the lyrics at the bottom of the screen. Like, Galit na yung agila, tama oh. na yung pagnanakaw. Mm -hmm. Let's let's now work for the rule. As you said, the rule of law. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking about the rule of law, let's talk about um, the impeachment uh, trial. And as you all know, it started in the lower house, the House of Representatives. What are your um, reflections about what happened there? Because, um, as I recall, it was transmitted, it was passed, the impeachment, the articles of impeachment were passed with, with really, uh, in, in, in almost record time, I can't even think of any law that has been in passed by hours. the lower house. <laughs> as fast. In three hours. So what do you think about what happened in the, in the lower house? Because as we all know from the lower house, the articles of impeachment are now transmitted to the upper house, the Senate, for a trial. So let's begin with the lower house, and that's, that really is where it all started. What do you think about, what are your reflections then that, Bob, Mr. Estrella? Well, uh, from the point of view of a citizen, yes. uh, not that of a lawyer, um, one, it will take some time for you to be able to evaluate a case that is given to you for assessment. And just reading it will take you several hours because the, the allegations pages. that were placed in the sheet, information <laughs> sheet, yes is such that it will be a little bit difficult to comprehend in one sitting. So it may, you may really need to take some time to understand and uh, develop a, a position with regards to the information that you get. At the same time, you need to uh, do some research. You, do, you need to get more information to be able to find out whether the information that is provided you is one, accurate, yes. uh, it is fair, you know, and the process that you will undergo will be as transparent as you can. Otherwise, you will not be preser preserving the rights, the rights of a particular citizen. It's very difficult to charge an individual and, and tell him he's already guilty. Yes. You know, yes. I, I still guess that, you know, learning it from civics, <laughs> that we are presumed to be innocent. You know, until that's proven guilty. Be how it is. <laughs> until proven guilty. You know, yes. that's, the, yeah. Yeah, that's the whole exercise. Yes. And, and, and you, you were mentioning something about the, uh, the volume of papers. 900 pages. They, How they, can you read that in three hours? 900, 900 pages uh, thick. Thick. Mm. Wow, okay. And they, they said there was this um, PowerPoint presentation, no? but, um, well, I'm also not a lawyer, but I'm a writer, no? And um, I listen to the experts, no? And um, in a press conference, the day before um, the actual filing of the impeachment case uh, Senate. Uh, the um, governors of the IBP the held a the press conference. Yes. Um, IBP, uh, IBP yes. Integrated Bar of the Philippines, held a press conference. And in that forum, they declared, they stated clearly that of the 86 IBP chapters all over the Philippines, 83 voted, nag-vote sila eh, that the impeachment case, uh, impe impeachment case was constitutionally infirm. So, ako writer ako, I respect the expertise of other people. No? So that alone should have uh, guided the decisions of our lower and higher houses of Congress. Yes, yes. I mean, and yes. Hindi. Yes. So well, the, the apparently, 188 congressmen uh, affixed their signatures or, or, or voted to, to transmit these articles of impeachment to the upper house. How can you explain that? How can you explain that an overwhelming majority of uh, congressmen, of lawmakers in, in the lower house, actually, uh, you know, chose to, 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 to transmit it to the upper house? Well, uh, if you look at it, it would seem to be that even before such a proposition was made to them, their minds were already made up. Uh, it's very difficult to understand how people can say uh, yes to a particular proposition, uh, specifically this, this, uh, this allegation that they have against the chief justice of the, the Philippines. In a democracy, it is not easy to charge people. It's not, it's not just, I accuse you, and then uh, you just say, okay, I'm done after the accusation, and let others uh, evaluate whatever I said. It will take some time. See, uh, buddy, I, I conduct executive seminars. No 
if we have to talk about a particular subject, well, I use also PowerPoint uh, presentations. But you have to go through the fundamentals, the concepts, the principles, specifically the purpose. And from that purpose, you strengthen it with enough details to convince the individual why you will be motivated and have the attitude to, to go with my, uh, with my proposition. Yeah. It takes time for you to make up your mind. I'm sure that is not uh, difficult to understand from yes. a point of view of an individual understanding a subject. But making a decision to say that you have done this in violation of this is still another, uh, still another stage of a decision-making process. Yes. And three hours, even a day, even a week will take too long for you. Now, that's considering an individual. Now, considering that 188 people will have the same conclusion in three hours gets you to be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so the only thing that you can probably say at this point is even before Nicholas. the subject was presented to them, their mind is already made up. It's just a confirmation of that particular mind. Yes, and as you were saying, in, in, in management scenarios where, yes. as you said, that just making a, like a simple decision, a management decision requires yes. people to, to be... Um, the case to be explained to people, for it yes. to be made clear, the, I mean, for, for all the facts to be out there yes. for full understanding. Yes. In this case, we're talking about the impeachment of a head of oh, a co equal, equal branch of government, government. government, something not to be taken lightly. Precisely. And the other thing is, you have not heard this side. See, the, this is the point. You have your own point of view. However, you need to find out the other person's point of view. But is that, so a, requ is that a requirement, though, for, for in the house, in the house, in the house rules, for them to, to, to let's say, to, to pass or, or to vote on a, in an impeachment complaint against an official? Is it, is it a requirement for them to get that official's point of view as well? Well, uh, I'm, I am not so sure about the rules mm. of the court on that one. But mm. as far as I'm concerned, if I am an individual sure. that is fair to everybody, I must hear the side of the sure, other yes, individual yes. for me to be able to decide. It's a moral responsibility. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, yes. that, it's not only a moral responsibility. It is, I think, the right of the individual to be heard. That is, I think, what you call due process. Yeah. Uh, and due it's, process. A, it's a due process, you know. Now, uh, I mean, how come their minds are, I mean, what do you think happened? I mean, how come the 188 congressmen, how come their minds were made up uh, so fast? I mean, usually it's very hard to get congressmen to, to vote this way or that way. I mean, uh, you, you have to persuade them, you have to convince them. But in this case, wow, they all sailed in one direction. Well, if I look back uh, into, that, uh, into that process, I think that's a culmination of a, uh, a longer process that started even before the uh, election of the president. His mind is already made up. Uh, uh, against this individual, and he has started to lay the groundwork of that. See, there was a change, and I'm not saying that this was uh, intentional, there was a change in the reporting line of the Land Registration Commission. There's a change of the reporting line of the AMLA. There's a, there's a preparation for an ombudsman. Uh, all of these things, I think, were planned ahead of time, and it just takes a confirmation of the final approving body for the impeachments, which are the congressmen, to be able to uh, confirm that such a formal process can be uh, implemented. Yeah. At that point, the PowerPoint presentation is just more of a summary to give justification for the yes uh, decision of the 188 uh, people. Ms. Ms. Mable, anything uh, you should add? Well, that kind of a scenario only goes to show graphically to the nation that our lawmakers are just like, you know, robots uh, following the drumbeat of the leader, no? Uh, when, when we think of the forefathers' concept of a republic, we have three equal branches of government. So, merong executive, and that's headed by the president, meron yung legislative, headed by the congressmen and the senators and the judiciary. So when 188 congressmen sign in after three hours such a grave um, document as the impeachment complaint against a, a co-equal branch of government, <laughs> it's ano eh, parang where is the independence of this uh, congressmen now, no? Yes. Are they just uh, following the executive yes. without question, without anything? Or 
Is there a quid pro quo? No, yung kagagayan sila sabi ni Senator uh, Santiago na so many so many deals were uh, exchanged, no, yes. for yes. getting the Chief Justice impeached. Yes. Then, if that is the case, then nasaan yung matuwid na daan? I mean, that is corruption of the highest degree in the highest levels of government, yes. no, yes. and. Um, like that's why people like us in Tangulang Demokrasya cannot just be silent about it, no? In fact, yung amin ngang logo eh agila. Wala na, diniscard na namin yung kalabaw. Hindi na tayo kalabaw. Galit na yung agila. <laughs> Galit na. <laughs> oh, oh. Eh, we cannot let this pass. But see, the problem also lies in in the system because um, as you all know, um, the, the, the executive really has a, a, str a stranglehold almost on specifically the House of Representatives because of its power, its control of the purse. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think for many congressmen, uh, the failure to tow the, the palace line mm -hmm. would mean, let's say, uh, virtual no forfeiture of your uh, pork barrel allocations. And as you know, in, in, in local politics or any politics is that, if you can't bring home the bacon to your constituency, it's, it's, it's political suicide. Like example, um, Representative Mitos uh, Magsaysay, mm -hmm. was, uh, who's also a, a host here in GNN, mm -hmm. was one of those who didn't sign. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's been quite open about it. She, she actually says that, you know, I have not received my pork barrel allocations. In fact, she has a scholarship program, I understand. And she had to go to the private sector to get funding because there was really a lockout of, funds, uh, of funding for her from, from DBM, from the uh, Department of, uh, budget, uh, of Budget Management. And um, now I remember. Um, after the 188 signed, there were these um, 12 congressmen who did not sign, but who, who uh, offered to sign. So, naging 200 plus yan eh, signatories. The reason, oh, oh yung, <laughs> the one in Bicol, uh -huh. the, the reason given was that um, we, cannot, uh, we cannot deprive our constituency, according to this uh, congressman of Bicol, yes. uh, the benefits of the pork barrel that would be denied them if they did not sign. Yes, yes. So it's really so, damned if you do, damned if you don't. And yeah. what, Mr. Yeah. Rochelle, yeah. Well, uh, talking about the pork barrel, if you have to give one out of 200 plus congressmen his pork barrel, it is but fair you have to give the others. Yeah. Otherwise, you are having favorites. You know. In fact, in your family, if you have so many sisters and brothers, you don't like favorites. The point here is, why should something that is meant, not specifically for their representative, but for his uh, constituents, that is due to the constituents, why will you deprive the constituents with the benefits that they should receive in the first place? Well, that's the big difference between here and the United States. That's yes. why a lot of people are saying that the Philippine president, in terms of real power, is actually more powerful than the U.S. president. Because in, in, in America, for instance, if I'm a congressman, let's say, from New York or from Wisconsin, even if I'm against Mr. Obama yes. and one of his fiercest critics, I get my pork barrel regardless. Mm. There's no stopping me getting my pork barrel. And right. like here, there are ways that I think, I understand that DBM can actually delay it or, or, or uh, realign it or withhold oh. it for whatever reason. Yes. So, so that, there lies the problem. So that, that in itself is a uh, window for corruption in the highest levels. Absolutely, absolutely. Huh? And a way of co-opting a co-equal branch of government to do the bidding, uh, the de facto bidding of the executive. Um, Mr. Sally, Ms. Mable, hold that thought. We've mm -hmm. talked about the lower house. We'll shift now to the, to the upper house when Philippines Uncut returns. Okay.